I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God. Just as the word God in one God is not really a name, so the word one in one God is not really a number. The unnameable is also uncountable. And this means that when we talk about one God, we're not counting, we're finding a word to express how unique God is. The Jews learned this. The history of their revelation is in part the history of their growth from belief in one God with a small o and a small g to a belief in one God with a capital O and a capital G. In the beginning, the Jews did have a God in whom they believed. All their neighbors had too. We had our God, you had yours. Our God helped us and your God helped you. If you and we did battle and we won, that showed our God was the stronger. If you won, it showed that your God was stronger. The Jews started from the same place as everyone else with we are the best because our God is the best. But what happened next was unique. The business of having a God to look after them grew into an enduring and a deepening relationship. And amazingly, their belief changed to our God is our God even if he lets us down. It was a relationship that continued to grow in times of defeat as well as times of victory. During the Babylonian exile, the Jews were forced to reflect. They came to a shocking discovery. The Creator God is the same as the God of the Jews, the God whom we have known and served and disobeyed and argued with. Even at the beginning of the New Testament, there were plenty who thought that our God is God meant our God, small g, is the best God with a small g ever and were waiting for him to come and crush their enemies. It took the coming of God the Son and his dying on the cross to teach them that the victories of God happen in a different way. How can we possibly relate to God if he is something so far above anything that we can experience or understand? How should we conceive of such an exalted being? The creed comes to our rescue because it is a sequence of acts, not statements. So when I stand up in public and say, I hereby put my trust in one God, I am really doing it. I am renouncing slavery to all the little gods, such as horoscopes and racial purity, and cultural hygiene, and economic progress and personal fulfillment and all the rest. These little synthetic gods are not real, they are ghosts. And if I put my trust in them, I too will be a ghost. Only God, the capital G, can give me life and make me human. It is true that being human is less comfortable than being a rule-following machine, but it also means being alive. You shall have no other gods but me is more than just an instruction. It's there to show us where true life is.